So after going through the 161 page James Damore Google lawsuit, I was really at a loss as how to describe the culture of groupthink when it comes to diversity and inclusion at Google. Of course, this is just a snapshot of what's going on at Google. It doesn't represent the culture in its entirety, and Google has yet to respond to any of these claims. But the kind of behavior documented here in testimony and screenshots of internal communication at the company is disturbing to say the least. It's the kind of behavior you might expect from social justice warriors on university campuses. And that's why this article by David French in the National Review Online, Social Justice Warriors Dominate a Leading Tech Firm, offers, in my opinion, the best description. Let's ponder a disturbing question. What if the crisis of free speech on college campuses with their often extreme intolerance for conservative points of view represents the high point for free expression in a student's life? In other words, what if the real world is more repressive, more ignorant, and more punitive toward dissenting speech? What if entire corporations adopt the ideologies and norms of the most ruthless campus social justice warriors, ruining careers and depriving employees of their livelihoods when those employees dissent from the dominant ideology. In other words, what if the rest of corporate America starts acting like Google? And that really is my key takeaway from this lawsuit. It's often said that university snowflakes will get a shock when they go out into the real world. But if the corporate landscape starts to increasingly look like Google, then there will be no shock to the system, just accommodation of their entitled delusions. And so to the lawsuit, which does not just include James Damore, but A1 David Guterman, and as Damore's lawyer notes. Yeah, I mean, so for every James Damore who got fired, uh, Tucker, yes. there are many people inside the company who we represent who are afraid to even raise their hand and say this is happening to me because the threat is not just of a blacklist within Google, but of a blacklist within the entire tech community throughout the United States. That's, the, See, that's how scary this is. So I'm not going to go through all the details of the complaint. I just want to concentrate on the cult of censorship of the diversity and inclusion ideologues at Google as it pertains to James Damore's situation. Now it should be said up front that Damore was a model employee. Damore was diligent and loyal and received substantial praise for the quality of his work. Damore received the highest possible rating twice, including in his most recent performance review, and consistently received high performance ratings, placing him in the top few percentile of Google employees. Throughout the course of his employment with Google, Damore received approximately eight performance bonuses, the most recent of which was approximately 20% of his annual salary. Damore also received stock bonuses from Google, amounting to approximately $150,000 per year. Damore was never disciplined or suspended during during his entire tenure at Google. Based on Damore's excellent work, Damore was promoted to senior software engineer in or around January 2017, just eight months before his unlawful termination by Google. So on March 30th, 2017, Damore attends a weekly TGIF meeting, and this particular meeting was titled Women's History, in which two female Google executives, Ruth Peratt and Eileen Norton, were brought in as presenters. During the March 30th, 2017 TGIF meeting, either Porat or Norton pointed out and shamed individual departments at Google in which women comprised less than 50% of the workforce. Alternatively, they applauded and praised departments such as the sales department where women comprise more than 50% of the workforce because equality. During the event, Porat and Norton also discussed that when looking at groups of people for promotions or for leadership opportunities on new projects, Google would be taking into account gender and ethnic demographics. They then mentioned that Google's racial and gender preferences in hiring were not up for debate because this was morally and economically the best thing to do for Google. Yeah, but was it legal? Then in June 2017, Damore attended Google's Diversity and Inclusion Summit. The summit covered general topics such as how Google could increase its diversity. Specifically, the Google presenters went through some of their policies that were designed to accomplish this, such as treating preferred categories of people, women, certain but not all ethnic minority groups, differently during the hiring process by providing extra interviews and putting applicants into a more welcoming environment based on their race or gender. Well, that doesn't sound condescending at all, does it? The Google presenters also discussed putting diverse individuals into high-priority queues so that they were more likely to be hired and hired faster. Google defined diverse individuals as women or individuals who were not Caucasian or Asian. So just remember, if you're a white or Asian male, you are not diverse. doesn't matter what you've done with your life as an individual. By dint of your race and gender, 
You're a non-diverse human being. And in response to requests for written feedback at this summit, that's when Damore wrote a draft of his memo, Google's ideological echo chamber. Now, I'm going to assume if you're watching this video, you know all about the memo. If you don't, you can click on the link in the top right corner, and that'll take you to a relevant video. So the memo was circulated internally within Google for quite some time, but was essentially ignored by those in authority, even though Damore sent it to HR, questioning whether these hiring practices were even legal. Then in July at another diversity training event called Bias Busting, which talked about how women are discriminated against in the workplace and how white male privilege exists, because of course it does, Damore had the temerity to argue that the presentation was one-sided. When Damore verbalised his dissent and his concerns with the one-sided presentation, other employees, including managers, laughed at him derisively. They considered his views to be conservative and thus flawed and worthy of disparagement. So then fast forward to the memo being leaked outside the company by an unknown employee. Then the abuse starts, not just at Demore, but anyone that doesn't tow the company line. On August 3rd, 2017, George Sadlier, a director at Google, sent out a mass email condemning James S.A. as repulsive and intellectually dishonest and promising an HR investigation into Demore. Sadler also promoted posts that advocated for physical violence against Demore. Subsequently, on Friday, August 4th, 2017, Demore received a late night email from Alex Hidalgo, a site reliability engineer at Google in Sadler's organization, which stated, you're a misogynist and a terrible person. I will keep hounding you until one of us is fired. Fuck you. So Damore forwards that wonderfully tolerant email to HR, and he was told that he should work from home. Not the guy that wrote the email. Damore should work from home. Then on the following Monday, Damore was fired over the phone. So just a couple of days after he received that wonderful email, Damore was fired. And the official reason? For perpetuating gender stereotypes. Although neither of the staff responsible for his termination could identify any Google policy or procedure that Damore had violated. And it seems that some employees were rewarded bonuses for arguing against Demore's view. The Google recognition team allowed employees to give fellow employees peer bonuses for arguing against Demore's political viewpoints. Peer bonuses were typically reserved for outstanding work performance or for going above and beyond an employee's job duties. Defending the liberal agenda or defending violations of California employment law is not in any Google employee's job description. In one example of this, an employee gave a peer bonus to another employee and stated that the bonus was for speaking up for googly values and promoting diversity and inclusion in the wretched hive of scum and villainy that is Demore's memo. The Google recognition team reviewed this justification, considered it appropriate, and allowed the bonus to proceed. Now, I'm not sure if this bonus is monetary. The email talks about a certificate to print out and hang on your cube wall, fridge, robot, etc. So this sounds like it's an even more mediocre award than a participation trophy. Now, of course, just in case this happens again, that somebody has the audacity to question the cult of diversity and inclusion at Google, the stunning and brave Colm Buckley, a high-ranking director, vowed his intention to stifle political dissent. You know, there are certain alternative views, including different political views, which I do not want people to feel safe to share here. My tolerance ends at my friend's terror. You can believe that women or minorities are unqualified all you like. I can't stop you, but if you say it out loud, then you deserve what's coming to you. Yes, this is silencing. I intend to silence these views. They are violently offensive. Ah, uh, yes, the time-honoured SJW practice of conflating words with violence. And of course, Damore never said women and minorities are unqualified to begin with. Perhaps some projection there from Colm. Now, from here, the complaint goes on to talk about David Guterman, but perhaps I'll save that for another video. But I did want to highlight some of the more hysterical cultish groupthink in reaction to Damore's memo and his firing. Take, for example, Andrew Bunner. James Damore has really gone out of his way to show the world just how unemployable he is. I hope for him that he grows up and develops some measure of empathy, a long road given how far he's dug his heels in. And then he quotes an utterly absurd rant by one Ashley Rents. Racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, Islamophobia and transphobia are not opinions. They are anti-values. We must reinforce our company's culture by openly and loudly rejecting 
those anti-values. You see, the problem, Ashley, is if you're going to oppose and reject all those isms and phobias, you have to establish that they actually exist and not just assert they do because your bubble of groupthink has been challenged. Remember, all Damore suggested was that there may be other factors to explain why there are fewer women in tech than just discrimination. Remember, in Damore's memo, he said he supports diversity and even suggested ways to increase the number of women at Google. Now, this one, I think, takes the cake for virtue signaling. Hey, team, by now many of you will have heard about or read the PC manifesto written by an ill-informed and misguided person at this company. I'm so incredibly disappointed that one of our co-workers could possibly think this is even remotely a contribution to objective debate. This is mansplaining at its most caustic, and it's not okay. I want a culture that values open discussion and exchange of ideas, but also one that unmasks prejudice disguised as scientific reasoning. I want an industry that deeply values diversity without question and fights for it. Do these idiots even read their own writing? You want a culture that values open discussion and exchange of ideas. And you also want an industry that deeply values diversity without question. That's why I'm going to Grace Hopper this year. It's why I'm writing this email, and it's why I hope you'll join me in making sure everyone on this team feels belonging and can bring their authentic selves to work. I mean, how much soy do you have to drink to write crap like that? Well, probably less than is required to write this. It's nice that we're all inclusive and happy people and glad we're not encouraging the viewpoint, but what happens when someone pushes a horrible, bigoted essay that causes widespread hurt? Any consequences? Nothing? Which is it? Because if we don't take a position, then good people will leave because the bar to whatever one can say and get away with has just been significantly lowered. So what's next? Something far more dangerous? And the only people working for us then are the people who are okay with that? Where's the line? Is it not this document? What will you do about it? What values does the company hold and is willing to uphold? Well, certainly not an open exchange of ideas and a difference of opinion, that's for sure. And what would a witch hunt be without a good old purge to back it up? The author was not alone in his views. 175 plus people agreed to some degree before the poll was taken down. They and others like them work among us and maybe managers on hiring, promo committees, etc. What is being done to understand the true scope of this cancer within our culture? But this one sums up best the attitude of intolerance at Google. This is an attack on people as people, on people's humanity, on people's employment security, on their place in the world, on their fundamental value as human beings. And that is why there can be no healthy debate. No one should have to debate their own humanity or the terms of their own existence. The very idea is demeaning and degrading. There will be no debate. There will be no discussion. The matter is settled. You lost. Think about how utterly unhinged that is. That simply suggesting that men and women on average have different interests and abilities, and not that one is inferior, mind you, just different. And therefore, that may explain some part of the reason why women are underrepresented in tech. This is threatening people's humanity. I think the only thing that is being threatened here is your sanity. Now, even if you are completely on board the diversity and inclusion train, how can you not recognize a complete intolerance for a difference of opinion? And not just any opinion, not a throwaway line, but a well-documented, reasoned opinion supported by empirical evidence. Now, I recently had the opportunity to ask Milo Yiannopoulos at Parliament House about the significance of James Damore. Just one more, Milo. Do you yeah. think we will still know the name James Damore in 12 months' time? Is he an important person? Yes, of course. Um, something happened in video games that everybody remembers very badly because it was reported on really badly called Gamergate, which went down in history as a, a bunch of men on the internet harassing women. It wasn't what it was about at all. It was about um, it was a massive consumer uprising against feminist interference mm -hmm. in video games. It was a huge cultural event. Well, James Damore's firing from Google was another huge cultural event, and these are going to start to stack up. Um, and he's going to, I think, come to be seen as one of the earliest in a long line of huge events which smash the progressive left's hold on culture. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I hope Milo was right about that. No doubt this story is not going away anytime soon. And remember, this is only half the complaint. There is another treasure trove of documents in this complaint demonstrating the utterly intolerant culture that is openly encouraged at Google. I'll see you next time.